Let me just give you a few highlights. I'll be quoting from an article that I wrote a couple of weeks ago, which summarized uh, the campaign. I titled it, If I Were President. If I were president, I would begin the process of safely extracting our troops from Iraq. In the first place, our troops are no longer fighting a war. They are an occupation force, which occupies a sovereign country. And this is being done without a declaration of war from Congress. The Iraqi people resent our occupation as much as we would resent another nation stronger than ours invading and occupying America. If such a thing happened to our beloved country, I'm sure many of us would also become quote-unquote insurgents. In the second place, the invasion and, and occupation of Iraq was absolutely unnecessary. Instead of sacrificing more than 4,000 American lives and tens of thousands of Iraqi citizens, not to mention two to three trillion dollars, President Bush should have supported Ron Paul's H.R. 3076, the September 11 Mark and Reprisal Act of 2001. This is the constitutional way to deal with rogue terrorist organizations. This is the way that President Thomas Jefferson responded to the Barbary pirates. According to Congressman Paul, quote, a letter of mark and reprisal is a constitutional tool specifically designed to give the president the authority to respond with appropriate force to those non-state actors who wage aggression against the United States, while limiting his authority to only those responsible for the atrocities of that day. Such a limited authorization is consistent with the doctrine of just war and the practical aim of keeping Americans safe while minimizing the costs in blood and treasure of waging such an operation, close quote. Had President Bush responded in this manner, tens of thousands of lives would have been saved, trillions of dollars would not have needed to be spent, Osama bin Laden and most of his fellow terrorists would likely be dead, and we would not be bogged down in a nightmarish military quagmire in Iraq. And if I were president, this is exactly how I would handle terrorist organizations such as Al-Qaeda. Furthermore, it is absolutely ludicrous to say we're fighting a war on terror halfway around the world when we refuse to secure our borders and ports. If I were president, I would immediately seal our borders. I would also see to it that employers in America who knowingly hire illegal aliens are prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. In plain language, any employer who consciously hires illegal aliens would go to jail. They would not pass go. They would not collect $200. They would go straight to jail. By sealing the borders and by cutting off the money supply to illegal aliens, the problem of illegal immigration would dry up. As it is, we have no idea how many potential terrorists, not to mention violent gang members such as MS-13, have snuck and are sneaking across our borders. And speaking of illegal immigration, as president, I would enforce our visa rules. This means anyone who overstays a visa or otherwise violates U.S. law is immediately deported. There would be no path to citizenship given to any illegal alien. That means no amnesty, not in any shape, manner, or form. I would not allow tax dollars to be used to pay for illegal aliens' education, social services, or medical care. As president, I would end birthright citizenship for illegal aliens. There would be no anchor babies during my administration. If I were president, I would use the bully pulpit of the White House to encourage Congress to pass Congressman Ron Paul's Sanctity of Life Act. In short, this bill would do two things. Number one, it would declare that unborn babies are persons under the law. Secondly, under the authority of Article 3, Section 2 of the U.S. Constitution, it would remove abortion from the jurisdiction of the court. In essence, this bill would immediately overturn Roe v. Wade and end legalized abortion. Republicans tout themselves as being, quote, pro-life. Yet the GOP controlled both houses of Congress and the White House, the entire federal government, for six years and did absolutely nothing to overturn Roe or end abortion on demand. Under my administration, we could end legal abortion in a matter of days, not decades. And if Congress refused to pass Dr. Paul's bill, I would use the constitutional power of the presidency to deny funds to protect abortion clinics. Either way, legalized abortion ends when I take office. On the subject of foreign policy, as president, I would end foreign aid, period. I would also end the current infatuation with nation building, empire building, 
and interventionism. America is not the world's policeman. Neither are our military personnel the personal militia of the United Nations. Remember that President Bush told the UN in 2003 that the reason we invaded Iraq was for the purpose of securing, and I quote, the peace and credibility of the United Nations. I lie not, that's what he said. President Bush also placed the United States back under UNESCO in spite of the fact that President Reagan had heroically taken the U.S. out from under that sinister organization. I'm sure that readers recall that the U.N. Charter was authored by a Soviet communist agent, Alger Hiss, and that the U.S. has been fighting wars for the U.N. ever since the organization was created back in 1945. Speaking of the U.N., as president, I would withhold funds from the support of the United Nations. In other words, I would get the U.S. out of the U.N. Beyond that, when I move into the White House, the U.N.'s rent is up. They move out of New York City post-haste.